Hello my dear students, welcome to my YouTube channel that's Concepts of Chemistry. Before starting today's lecture, please do subscribe my channel. My dear students, today we are going to discuss the de Broglie model. So here's the de Broglie sir, you can see his pic on the screen. Uh, in the previous lecture we have studied the Bohr model. Bohr model stated that electrons revolve around the nucleus in a well-defined path called orbit or stationary state in which the electron will not emit electromagnetic waves. D. Broglie sir supported this concept but he said D. Broglie stated that electron will revolve in that stationary state only but in a wave form. So let me write this thing. Bohr model. Bohr model stated that electron revolves around the nucleus revolves around the nucleus in a well defined path in a well defined path called orbit or stationary state or stationary state in which electron in which electron will not emit electromagnetic waves or EM waves. Now Bohr sir supported this concept. Sorry, D. Broglie sir supported this concept. But D. Broglie sir stated that D. Broglie sir stated that electron will revolve. in stationary state only in stationary state only but in wave form but in wave form so for understanding the de Broglie model we should understand a topic called interference first so let's talk about interference. I am writing the topic is interference. So it is the phenomenon that deals with the addition of two waves. I am writing it is the phenomenon that deals with the addition of two waves now the two waves adds up in the two ways that is the constructive interference and the destructive interference so interference is of two types the first one is constructive interference and the another one is destructive interference destructive interference now Let's talk about the constructive interference. Now I am drawing a diagram for you. First of all, this is the first wave and I have to add this wave with the second wave and uh, this is the second wave. Now in both wa waves, 
you can observe that the crest of first wave overlaps with the crest of second wave whereas the trough of first wave overlaps with the trough of the second wave due to which what will happen due to which a new wave will form with double amplitude a new wave will form with double amplitude but with the same wavelength so that's the constructive interference now when the crest of one wave overlaps with the crest of second wave and the trough of first wave overlaps with the trough of the second waves that's that means the both the waves are in same phase so i'm writing so what is constructive interference it is the addition of two waves which are moving in same phase that is crest of first wave overlaps with crest of second wave and trough of first wave overlaps with trough of second wave resulting in a new wave with double amplitude with double amplitude but same wavelength as that of two waves which are adding up so that's called constructive interference now let's talk about the destructive interference i'm again drawing the diagram this is the first wave and i'm adding this thing with this is the second wave in both the waves you can observe that crest of first wave overlaps with the trough of the second wave and the trough of first wave overlaps with the crest of second wave so due to which what will happen there is a formation of new wave but there will be a cancellation there will be a cancellation of amplitudes so this is the result so that's called destructive interference so i'm writing uh it is the addition of two waves which are moving out phase which are moving out phase that is uh crest of first wave overlaps with trough of second wave 
and trough of first wave overlaps with crest of second wave resulting in a new wave by cancellation of amplitude that's called destructive interference so that's the uh, so i have taught you about the interference the constructive interference and the destructive interference now so now i'm going to apply this the topic the interference in the de broglie model so for de broglie model let me make the two cases first of all i'm making a nucleus and one orbit i have written plus z d that's my nucleus and uh, this is the imaginary orbit around the nucleus let me make one more case again this is plus z d that's the nucleus and that's the imaginary orbit So let's talk about the first case. Let's assume electron is present over here. Now electron will revolve in this orbit but in a wave form like the crest and the trough. That's the first wave. Now that's the second wave that's the third wave and that's the fourth wave so now let's talk about the fifth wave now fifth wave will start from here and it will be in regular series of crest and trough of the first wave so this is the constructive interference so i'm writing the fifth wave i'm talking about the fifth wave which i have shown with a green color the fifth wave will be formed in regular series of crests and troughs which indicates the constructive interference which indicates the constructive interference so the orbit in which the electronic wave is in the constructive interference is regarded as stationary state for the de broglie model so i'm writing the orbit in which electronic wave is in constructive interference that orbit 
is considered as that orbit is considered as stationary state for de Broglie model. Or you can also say that when there are uh, whole number waves, when the number of waves which are forming in the stationary orbit is a whole number. You can see that here are the whole number is 4. There are 4 waves which are forming in this orbit. The number of waves is whole number so that's why it will form the constructive interference and it will be regarded as the stationary state. Uh, or you can also say that when the number of waves formed by electron in an orbit is whole number. In this example that whole number is 4. There are the 4 waves which are formed by electron in the stationary state. So the, when the number of waves formed by electron in an orbit is whole number then there will be constructive interference there will be constructive interference and that orbit will be stationary state that orbit will be stationary state. So now let's talk about the second example which I have taken a uh, second diagram the nucleus and the orbit. So now let's talk about this. Assume electron is present over here. Hold on. So now assume electron is present over here. So now let's count its waves. It is the first wave. Now this is the second wave. Now, this is the third wave. Now, this is the fourth wave. Now, from here, there will be a fifth wave, which is an irregular series of crest and troughs forming the destructive interference. So, due to which this orbit is not accessible or not stationary for the de Broglie model. So, let me write this thing over here. I am writing here the fifth wave which I have shown with the green color. Here the fifth wave is forming irregular series is forming irregular series of crests and troughs irregular series of crests and troughs which indicates the destructive interference which indicates destructive interference destructive interference so this stationary state is not possible so this stationary state is not possible or regarded as stationary state for de Broglie model. So now let's come back to the first case. In the first case we were having uh, four waves. We were having the four waves. Uh, let me mark the first wave with a different color. 
in the first case we were having the four ways now uh, this is the hold on uh, this is the first wave now this is the second wave this is the third wave and finally this is the this is the fourth wave what i'm trying to do over here if if we if we multiply the number of waves let it be n dash the number of waves but the wavelength of one wave you will get the circumference of the whole of it here the number of waves are four if i'm going to multiply the four with the wavelength of one wave you will get the circumference of the whole of it so uh, let me take what is the wavelength over here the wavelength is this portion the wavelength is this portion if i multiply the number of waves with the wavelength of one wave i will get the circumference of the whole of it which comes out to be 2 pi r so this thing comes out to be the 2 pi r uh, just hold on for a second now uh, it comes out to be n dash lambda equal to the 2 pi r here let me mark the things this n dash this n dash is the number of waves i have taken number of waves to be n dash because a single n dash stands for orbit number so i'm uh, i'm trying to prevent the confusion n stands for orbit number n dash stands for the number of waves lambda is the wavelength which is equal to its circumference the circumference of the orbit is obviously 2 pi r where r is the radius of the orbit so what next i'm going to do wavelength lambda is equal to 2 pi r divided by n dash let me mark this number one now in the previous lecture we have talked about the de Broglie equation I am writing de Broglie equation the de Broglie equation is lambda is equal to the h upon mv now let's substitute the value of wavelength from number one over here the wavelength comes out to be 2 pi r divided by n dash is equal to the h upon mv now on rearranging this equation we got m v r comes out to be n dash h upon 2 pi i hope you remember this equation what's this equation m v r is equal to the n h upon 2 pi was this equation called it is a quantization of angular momentum which was given by Bohr sir so this equation is this equation is quantization of angular momentum is quantization of angular momentum given by Niels Bohr given by Niels Bohr so what does this proves I have derived the quantization of angular momentum equation from the de Broglie model so this proves that this proves that de Broglie model
and the Bohr model. Bohr model or Bohr concepts are in perfect agreement. Are in perfect agreement with each other. So that was the de Broglie model. So let me give you one question. Mm, I'm writing. Calculate the number of waves. Calculate the number of waves made by electron. in one revolution in third orbit of lithium dipolative ion. So first of all here what is the orbit number? N it comes out to be the 3. What's the atomic number? That's Z it comes out to be also 3. So we have to evaluate the number of waves. The formula is n dash lambda is equal to the 2 pi r where n dash is the number of waves and my motive is to find this n dash. For evaluating the n dash I have to first of all evaluate the wavelength and the radius of the third orbit. So let's first of all talk about the radius of third orbit. So I'm writing radius of third orbit will be the formula was 0 0.529 and square by z the unit was angstrom it comes out to be 0 0.529 here the n is 3 is 3 square divided by z the z is also 3 and it's in angstroms and this value comes out to be 0 0.529 into 3 angstroms the radius of third orbit or more specifically it comes out to be 0 0.529 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters. I have converted my angstrom to meters. Now I got the radius. Now we have to evaluate the wavelength. The wavelength, the formula for wavelength is h upon mv. Now for evaluating the wavelength we know the value of Planck's constant h and the mass of the electron that's m but we don't know the velocity. So again we have to evaluate the first of all velocity of electron in third orbit. The formula was 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 into z upon n meters per second. Here it comes out to be 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 the z the z is 3 over here divided by n the n is also 3 so this comes out to be 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 meters per second that's the velocity of electron in the third orbit now let's evaluate the wavelength then now the wavelength is h upon m into v the velocity of electron in third orbit the wavelength of electron in third orbit now it comes out to be 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 this is the value of Planck's constant divided by what's the mass of electron it's 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 what's the velocity of electron that we have evaluated it's 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 so I got the wavelength so now let's use the de Broglie model formula that was n dash lambda is equal to the 2 pi r we have to evaluate the n dash we got our wavelength to be 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 into 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 which is equal to the 2 what's the value of pi is 3.14 
and what's the value of radius for the third of it comes out to be 0 0.529 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 let's substitute it over here 0 0.529 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 after evaluating the whole thing the n dash comes out to be 3 so there are three waves there are three waves in third orbit which proves that this whole thing this whole derivation proves that I'm writing this proves that electron will make n number of waves n number of waves in nth orbit that is in the first orbit electron will make one wave in the second orbit electron will make two waves in the third orbit electron will make three waves and so on so that's all for today this whole was the de Broglie model I hope you all understood today's lecture if any student wants to book a paid one-to-one -one online class to clear their doubts, then he, she can contact me. My phone number is mentioned on thumbnail of this lecture. Please do like, subscribe and share my channel to maximum number of students. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Stay blessed.